Okay, everybody, welcome. Let's try to work a little bit on this magic that swirls around Vecna. And we can we can work on the skulls today. Let's see, triangle brush. Something a little more saturated for this one. Now I was thinking maybe since this is taking a long time, it might be boring for you guys watching. Um, maybe, just maybe, we could switch and do horses tomorrow. I was thinking, but I would like to have you guys feedback on this. Uh, in that case, I would finish Vecna off screen, obviously. I mean, off stream. And then I would probably <clears throat> just post a time lapse on YouTube. Something like that. You guys let me know what you think. Probably gonna say it again if someone else joins. What I want to do here is replace all of that murky grayish color with something a little more interesting. Obviously, the book is going to be some sort of center of interest. I want to make sure that's pretty clear. And I want this to feel like it's... So this goes this way. And maybe swirls right on the lead end. Something like that. I want to make sure I do consider what's going on underneath. Hey Chase, how are you? Thanks for joining in. Since, yeah, this is kind of it's on top, so what I'm going to do is probably just work on it, then reintroduce the rest later. Doing good. Is it hot over there? Um, it's getting hot again. Today is a little hotter than it was yesterday, and yesterday was a little hotter than the previous days. But last night was pretty, um, I would say even chilly, honestly. I had to use a blanket. 
How about there? This ball hurt. Going to be a hot week here, but not as bad as Europe. Yeah. <laughs> I heard, oh, at least my mom says she lives in the north of Italy, and she said they're going to have 44 Celsius there. I'm not sure I can believe that. I hope it's wrong. Is 44 is really hot. And they she doesn't have air conditioning because it's, it's the north. It's usually not necessary. Ever. It's not ever. It's not being, it's not being necessary when I was there. So, I wonder. It's 44 is a lot. I don't know how much that is in Fahrenheit, but I don't know, 110 maybe? I'm gonna say something stupid. I really can't convert Celsius to Fahrenheit off the top of my head. It's gonna. It's sort of hot. Outline the book for now. Make sure it's kind of. So that the pages are going to be. I think this. Oh, geez. <laughs> Read 11. Ah, uh, that sounds pretty hot. I don't think I've ever experienced that kind of temperature. And I hope I never will. <laughs> Though, well, if you, if you sit under my uh, porch, I got um, kind of a plastic roof here. If you sit there, at noon, with a thermometer, it's going to go up to 40 or less. That's not the real temperature, but it's really hot under the, the, the plastic roof. Thanks God it's not the real uh, atmospheric temperature, because that would be <laughs> kind of ludicrous. Uh, I want to add some texture to this, but I'm going to refrain for now. Just going to do it later. Hmm. This should be gold. Just clean this up a little bit and then get to the skulls. I really don't know how people survive without air conditioning, especially for humidity. Because heat, you can tolerate heat at, at, up to a certain point. Like if you're not in a city and you you you're you're the ground floor and it's kind of windy, <laughs> you can bear the heat even if it's really hot, or at least I can. But humidity. Like, 
the air being still. That's a whole other beast. That's uh, the main problem I had in Japan. It was so humid. You could not breathe. It was like a fish tank. So that's not pleasant. All right, let's get to this going. Okay, I'll replace all these darker kind of parts. Just keep coloring these in and leaving the open parts open. I won't try to shade them, but I do want to get some sort of volume out of them. Speaking of heat, I think, was it last year that Canada had this like killer heat wave? That was also pretty hot. Something around those temperatures we mentioned, I believe. Not sure if it was last year or the previous one. Quickly, we can replace these again. If it gets too long, I can just do a couple and then do the others separately while not recording, or maybe I can do an extra stream on Twitch for those of you who have the patience of watching the whole thing. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking of leaving a the full picture. Uh, somewhere on the screen as soon as I understand how to do it in um, in OBS I'm doing this manually like I am doing now. What if I drop a color there on top? Yeah, that kind of works. Although, it's not really addressing the main issue. Yeah, not good. Let's do something like that. It's better than nothing. Here, yeah, I'll just call it the whole thing uh, underneath though. <laughs> that. So the dark parts are gonna stay dark, obviously. It's too black now, but that's an easier fix than 
just doing the whole thing from scratch. Slightly better. Let's go back to our layer. Need the paint colors. All right, it's a little more here, maybe. Yeah. All right. Bit of modeling around these parts. This is gonna be lighter. I want I want it to look like there is some light in the skull. So like it's glowing inside basically. I'm just switch to color dodge sometimes because Be easier. Should be. I don't want it to look like there is an eye inside there. It's really, really easy to overdo. It's not dodging anything. This is starting to look okay. Reserve, oops. Reserve the feel of the glow. Keeping saturation up really high. He missed something. I still have the reference for that skull. Let me see. Yes, I do. Um, what did I miss here? This might be one of those that I. Okay. Yeah, I see what's wrong. It's one of those that I just um traced so it's missing a little bit of bone here because technically this is broke I'm not really using much reference at this point because I really, I, I've drawn so many skulls during the years. I'd be kind of depressed. I, I do cross reference sometimes, but it's not as fundamental. It's mainly for the volume, so I might just get it wrong er. Do that. It's gonna be mm 
that lighter. Not. Now, technically, there is a hole here, so it should also, like, the light should also come through that. Like, going up this direction. So let's try to address that. Let's see. I want to keep the outline a little bit, so something like that, and maybe um, add something. Okay, one skull, I think. We can call this one done. I might adjust it in the very final stage. But for now, we can stay. Alright, let's move to the next one. As for the streaming, I'm also wondering if this is still a good time to stream or if it should stream a little later. It's just that uh, people are probably at work in Europe at this time. And later when I could do it is probably lunchtime. Uh, somewhere in the US at least. It's kind of hard to find a time zone that works for a lot of people. It's going to be... Blend in a little. And a one. Let's see. Okay, this Bobella. Like this. Technically, this is not. This is a plane. It's not a. Oh, there's no line there. Where it's 11.30 a.m. in my time zone. Yeah. I'm not in the best place to stream for a U.S. audience. Honestly, unless I do it in your very early morning so that it is evening there. And still, I mean, I can probably target, like I could target um, the evening, the Pacific evening, not the Eastern evening. That would be impossible for me. That would be 
Deep Knight. So yeah, time zones are a problem. Probably being a little easier to target the US or um, the American time zone in June when I was in Japan because that would have been probably lunchtime around lunchtime in Japan. Maybe. Might be around there. Oh, they're dodge a little bit. Layer power. Let's duplicate it. Earlier, just keep drawing normally. Then, in the end, I will add some extra effects. It's not worth it to waste the time now. Here we go. No, it's a little bit long, but it's fun. This is good. It's not bad looking anyway. There's a little too much going on here. But there should be some more light. This should be a little lighter. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. Hey, let's work on the swirl a little bit. Let's try. Saturated color. Later or not, we'll see. Like some blurs, maybe. 
This didn't take very long, so I'm pretty confident we can finish the skulls today. Stand out ever since my day one. Outline for it, maybe. Hmm. It's kind of weird because these are done in the book, isn't it? <laughs> but it will be soon. I'm still bugged with the, by these ribs and. The jewel here seems very not in tune with the rest, so that's a to-do for later. Definitely a to-do for later. What plane can we use here? Well, plane is still gonna be lighter. Yeah, let's do that. It doesn't matter really because it's not. There's no like the only light here is the one they produce. So it's kind of choose whatever light you like. It doesn't matter. This blue, and then we can lighten it. Hey, Emperor of Cheese, the Mage Master. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm okay. How are you? I'm not right myself. Your drawing is looking killer. Nice dude. Thank you. I'm kind of happy with how it's turning out. As I was saying a while ago, um, I might uh, just kill Vecna uh, for a while or, and finish it off stream and just do horses tomorrow. Like horse studies. Um, since I don't have as many viewers, I don't know how many people are actually interested in, say, anatomy. Because I would like to study some horse anatomy before I jump onto the Kelpie thing. So... I don't want this to get excessively boring if I keep just doing... Working on the, the Vecna illustration. Because it might get heavy, you know, it's at this point it's basically just rendering, there's nothing fancy to it. So some people might find it 
boring. I don't know. You guys keep coming, so I guess not. I think you should stream whatever you want to stream. Build an audience around your interest, and usually that works out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I am definitely doing that. It's just that uh, it is taking a long time, you know. <laughs> so this is a, this is for a personal project, obviously, like a portfolio piece. But I do want to do uh, some anatomy as well. Like I want to stream an anatomy and see if someone is interested. I think it is an interesting topic. It's not really, there aren't as many resources about uh, animal anatomy and creature design or related stuff. Like how do you apply, how do you apply animal anatomy to actual creature design? So, perhaps thinking about doing it. It doesn't matter, honestly, you could do half and half where the other half you sketch something else. Also true. It's here. It's not too bad looking. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. It was not, I was not sneezing. Uh, it's, it was a little cough. I do have sniffles though. Remnant of my Japanese uh, experience. Hopefully one day I'll go back to normal. It's extremely annoying. <laughs> yeah. That's my mic. Oh wait, mic's deceiving you. to be excessively precise. Some of some all around on that. Let's see you can just just go around it. I think I can like it with the others. This blue is the base color, and it, it kind of hmm, leans more towards the aqua shade as it gets brighter. So it was um, uh, Japan ingitis? Yes, kind of. I've had a number of strange disease is later there number of strange things that the doctors refuse to investigate very lazy if you wanted to do one of the small commissions i sent you a while back for a stream it would be cool with that i would be cool with that um i might i'm thinking i'm thinking about it um i could do the kelpie you want because you wanted the kelpie right or seahorse that was that looked like a kelpie um that's just i'm calling it
Sorry to hear, I hope you get better. Yeah, I am. I am much better, actually, than I used to be. It just takes time. People usually have this image of Japan, like, oh, that's everything is super technological and stuff. It's not exactly like that. <laughs> I've been to um, ENTs that use Alembics for um, aerosol medicine, that kind of stuff. Like steam inhalation. They had Alembics. Seriously, it's, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's hard to believe. <laughs> The seahorse was one, maybe the magma raptor or needle bug. Hmm. Because with the seahorse, I could also do uh, a couple streams studying horse anatomy, and then I could do that. No, um, alembics, you know, like the, the ones that, um, let's see, tr traditionally they were used like by pre-scientists to mix Potions, A L E M B I C S, Alembics. I think that's the proper term. You know, those like kind of uh, round ball shaped pots where you would think a, you, you can see them in like fantasy illustrations and the wizards mix their stuff there. You know, alchemy tubes, yeah. I'm not kidding, that's what they were using there in Japan. I could not believe it myself. <laughs> but it's not as technological as it might seem. I hear Olympics. Yeah, because my pronunciation sucks. Uh, we can throw a patient into a therapy sauna and kill him the fastest. Yeah, well, they're kind of not interested in making you feel better. They just want to give you medicines, as far as I can understand. They think it's enough to just give you medicines and send you home without a proper investigation of what, on what you might actually have. Which is very distressing because sometimes you, you want you go to a doctor, you want to have someone who tells you, look, it's I'm sure it's nothing, it's probably this or that. Just uh, take this specific test or blood do some blood work and we'll find out. But they just don't do that. You have to insist and be very annoying for them to do something. Fortunately, I am annoying, so I was able to kind of find my way around it. It's just not pleasant. Not very pleasant at all. Well, I guess if I ever go to Japan, I'll use one of the international hospitals then. Yeah, the problem is that there weren't anywhere I was because I was in the countryside in the south. I wasn't around Tokyo or anything. So I'm pretty sure it's better there. Though it's probably, you know, there, there's got to be some hidden miss there as well. Yeah, there are some in Tokyo. And if you go online, you can you can find mixed um, opinions, I guess, about them. As for everything, obviously. But the bar the language barrier is the is a worst problem. Obviously. In general, that is there's a problem in Japan. At least for me. Being ignorant artist. Though, to my credit, I did try to study kanji and all that stuff. I do speak it, I just can't read it. I was offered a job in Japan, language barrier was a worry for me too. It really is, it is a problem. 
It's not just that though, it's just that the culture is very isolating. Even for them. You cannot expect to make a lot of friends in Japan. Let's leave it at that. I know a little kanji, but I cannot speak it. Yeah, for me, it's the opposite. Well, I know some, obviously. Simple ones, but uh, at some point I started getting confused because it was all... Uh, I would tell my wife, well, okay, so this means that. And she's like, no, this means a completely different word. And it's like, what? <laughs> Why? And so at some point the anger took over and I just quit studying. It was not worth it. I can speak, so I, I could speak. It was enough to make myself uh, understood by a doctor <laughs> if I need it. That's fine. But again, it's still, it's still hard. Even if you know kanji to a degree, you gotta know them so well to basically be mistaken for a Japanese to do stuff. Like I wanted to rent a place for um, trying to, you know, teach art, but they would not rent it to me because I had to go with my wife and and she would have to do everything because I was a foreigner and they would not trust me. I know basic word, words and phrases to make jokes, but I can't speak fluently. It's a difficult language anyway. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like that as well. Just a little more probably on the technical side because I need it. <laughs> technical terms like... Uh, Consoles, <laughs> sore throat, that kind of stuff. It's funny how most of the Japanese words I know are uh, various diseases. How dare they not trust you? Uh, they don't trust, uh, at least where I was, they don't, they, don't, they don't really trust foreigners as much. I understand to a degree. <laughs> But, I mean, I was there, I was married, and I had kids, so, like, why not? I'm not gonna try to run away with your room, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> they are, unfortunately, a little closed as a people. Now, if there is some Japanese watching, he's gonna be getting super, super upset with me. Just my personal experience. I knew a guy who went to Japan and people laughed at him because he knew Japanese from Samurai anime. Spoke very formally. Yeah, they don't... Their real spoken Japanese is very different from what you hear in anime. Very, very different. In fact, I was told that at the beginning that I was, speaking like, I was talking like a cartoon. Which was weird. Considering it's a very homogenous country, it's not shocking. Yeah, it's really homogenous. I think 95% are Japanese, something like that. I might be maybe off. Someone can correct me eventually. Hmm. But something around those. It is not a critique, it's just how it is, but um, because of the, let's say, international relevancy it has, uh, the country has, um, I mean, they it would be very much appreciated if they could be a little more open. Even now, I think, um, I don't know if my informations are up to date, but I think you can only go there as a tourist in groups of four and maximum 50 people per country now because of COVID. Just don't be one of the white guys going there talking about waifus. 
Oh no, no, I wasn't. I definitely wasn't. But, but, yeah, that's kind of annoying for them. I mean, it's annoying for everybody. But especially to them, it is annoying to have one that pretends to be Japanese. They rather prefer you to be what you are. Obviously. Although they do appreciate if you like to go. General advice, yeah. Hmm. Okay, it's uh, this one. If we have something left, it will just finish. I'm trying to convince myself. I'm almost 100% convinced I should do horses tomorrow. For a change, of, little change of pace. Looks a little more magical this way. Well, I didn't know about the restrictions. I would like to go draw and take pictures. I think I'll hold off on the ladies not priority. Yeah, it can go really wrong. Trust me. Really, really wrong. And I could use the snack machines. <laughs> oh, those are convenient. Really convenient. Also spooky sometimes, because they start talking to you. I was drawing once, I was out um, in front of a shop, I was uh, painting. The shop, actually. And this vending machine started talking, because I was, I was thirsty, actually. And it started saying, uh, are you thirsty? Why don't you take a drink? And I was like, that was weird. That was weird. I don't think it knew I was there. It, it just does that every now and or did that every now and then. But it was unsettling for me. Not used to it. Talking vending machine? Yeah. It was talking. Usual Japanese lady voice. Um, but everything talks there. My oven talked. My oven complained if I put uh, like a grill like with line, line pan in it and I chose the wrong program, it told me, oh, you selected the wrong program for the type of pan you put in. But please put in the other pan. I'm like, no, I want this one. I want this pan, not the other. I don't care what you say. And then it, it's all those little things that make your life worse, I guess. Not really worse, but it's, it's restricted freedom. You feel like you're being uh, spoon-fed for everything sometimes. It is useful for some things, but it becomes obnoxious at some point. Like at the um, the hardware store, you go there, you ask something, and they go, they they go, I don't know, they spent like an hour trying to, to find what you're looking for, even if they don't have it. But you're just gonna you're gonna stay there and wait until they're back, and they tell you, you know what, we don't have it. We can order it if you want. It's like, um, no, thanks, I need it now. I'll just go somewhere else. Even the vending machines are conformed, yes. <laughs> it is fun at first. Like it's it, obviously it's it's interesting to see very different things. But it's not always fun. Uh, like you cannot, well, at least there, I could not easily get a bank account. It took about a year before they gave me one. 
they just don't do it for foreigners, I guess. And it's ridiculous because you cannot even have a PayPal account if you don't have a bank account or a credit card. And obviously you, you cannot have that if you're a foreigner. I got rejected by um, Rakuten three times. And then I got upset, accepted by Amazon. But that took a long time. Do you still have citizenship there? I didn't, I didn't have citizenship. Uh, I had a residence card. They call it Zaryu man. Zaryu card. Uh, which is basically a temporary citizen visa, I guess. Uh, pretty obnoxious, so maybe I would do well there. I don't know. It depends. <laughs> it depends. I thought I would do well there because I'm very precise and I like order and clean. But then there are other things, that, they're very inflexible on a lot of things. I remember one day I was taking my son to the daycare and it was raining hell. So I parked right in front of it. I'm like, I'm just gonna drop him in or throw him in and, and leave. But the, I don't know, I guess she was a teacher. Uh, she was there and it's like, oh, you cannot park here. I'm like, I'm gonna be out of here in 30 seconds. Seriously, please, it's raining. And she was like, no, you can't park here. And I got really upset that time. Like, if I didn't curse, it's because I didn't want to get in trouble. But I was really upset and uh, it was, it was one of those days where you're late, you're gonna get to work, and you're not, you're, you do not want to meet the, uh, let's say the person who is gonna make your life even harder that day. So inflexibility is a problem on many things. In fact, I think um, if you go to Tokyo, there is an order to, well, not an order, really, you, you have to um, stand on a specific side of the uh, escalator to let people who are in a rush go through faster if they have to run or something, which I can understand, but they have a lot, a lot of rules, really. Too many, and some of them do not even make sense. I, I don't have such a big problem with rules that I cringe about them. It's just that they need to make sense to me so that I can accept them. <laughs> Otherwise, I become pretty nasty. Never mind. I'm pretty sure I would offend multiple people. Oh yeah, and the the I probably did, also intentionally <laughs> sometimes because <laughs> I was upset myself. Um, uh, what was I saying? Um, they do not tell you the truth ever. Do not go to Japan and expect to be told how people feel. Even if you do something bad to them, they're gonna smile and say thank you. And you will not know until it's too late because you're gonna pay the consequences of that. So it's like they're gonna do it on your back. They do that here too, but it's not enforced. You stay on the right. For fast commuters to go left, yeah. Yeah, that's just an example. I'm not even against it. I'm, I don't have any problem with that. I like order, like seriously. Uh, I'm a huge fan of order to a maniac level. <laughs> it's gotta be my OCD soul. But that is another thing, <laughs> really. Especially for rent. You gotta give uh, key money to the owner, which is basically like an extortion <laughs> that makes no sense. You pay the uh, landlord to hand you over the keys. That is the official explanation. So 
So when you, you get into um, a new apartment, and this happened to me, you have to pay uh, three months rent and the, the keys and the agency. And so I remember when we went into our first apartment, we spent 3,000 bucks or something just for getting in. <laughs> so... Yeah, Japanese people tend to close their emotions. I would see, yeah, because they don't have any. Um, no, just kidding. Maybe they do. I just don't know about that. They might. <laughs> Very hard to tell. Rent is not that expensive though, unless you go to Tokyo, because their their apartments are smaller. So in any case, you're not going to find, a, I don't know how much it is in feet, but in square meters is like 50 square meters in the countryside is already a lot. My house is larger. Uh, I actually built a house there. But that's definitely a luxury. I've been told your house is huge. And I'm like, Ugh, I don't feel like that for some reason. Everything is kind of smaller. Like everything is on the smaller side. Yeah, it's a very repressed society. They also have one of the highest suicide rates. I don't know how much that has changed. Uh, I don't think it has. The problem is that they, they tend to, as far as I can tell, they take things too lightly. So they didn't, and they did not discuss over them. Like, you cannot discuss a problem with a Japanese person because for them there is no problem. The problem is that you're actually discussing the problem. And so you can't solve it. So when they grow up, they, they're they not, as far as I can tell, as far as I could tell, they're not able to uh, argue as an adult person, which is really problematic. My job offer was a private academy, but it wasn't located in this city. Yeah, if you go to the countryside, all these issues exacerbate to the nth degree. Some people will live well there. It really depends on what you do. I, I think personally, as a person with some kind of skill, that is either web development, programming, uh, or art, it's really hard for a foreigner to do something because you're limited. So again, I wanted to maybe over time have a small art school or something there. It was, I had to give up because it was not feasible for me. You're always going to be a, a, a be great citizen there, regardless of your Japanese knowledge. Yeah. Uh... Some of the things we do in America would be there, like publicly arguing politics. Yeah, they just, they don't do that. Even uh, electoral campaigns, they are, uh, well, basically they just stay there and wave. That's all they do. That's pretty sad because it seems like you have a problem, but societal standards, uh, by societal standards, you think there's something wrong with you. So pretending and ignoring doesn't help. Yeah, that's the problem most of them have. That's why you have the hikikomori people. And, and the one of the worst things I notice is that um, people with, uh, what's it called, uh, mental issues, schizophrenia, all that kind of stuff, they are basically banned from the public. They just, they're not accepted, which is awful. I saw a video of them. A girl who's bipolar, I think. Um, she had anger issues and that kind of stuff. And her parents kicked her out and she was uh, homeless. Like, come on. I mean, that's too much. They, they care too much about um, the looks rather than 
digging deeper and trying to solve problems, maybe. Which is unfortunate. Really unfortunate, because the, the place is, again, as I said, it's beautiful. It's just afflicted by, one, weather, and two, mm, these societal issues. It might be why. Uh, I mean, at least a friend of mine has this um, idea. It might be why they and to exterminate all of these repressed feelings in anime and things that are over the top in terms of emotional charge. Maybe because of that. I don't know. But it, it really is too bad because it would be it would be cool to be able to interact with them a little more. Like you do in the West, you know. For a girl, I seen these underground videos, especially in Tokyo. A lot of these girls are kicked out of, uh, or uh, are kicked out or runaways, and they sell themselves there for money. It's the decay of a person. Yeah, it it really is sad. Yeah, that kind of uh, industry, especially the, um, that's called escort industry. That's huge in Japan. Like, I mean, you see love hotels everywhere. And you see all these businessmen coming out of there with you know, girls. So sad, like managers and stuff. Exactly, their art is basically how they channel emotions, yeah. Then you get the creepy old guys, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get them a lot. <laughs> I remember uh, my wife told me once uh, she was in the subway in Tokyo and there was a uh, apparently regularly regular looking old man sitting in front of her but in the window behind him she could see he was actually looking at hentai stuff. That's a huge issue there. Uh, the the whole let's call it not safe for work stuff. They shove it down your throat everywhere, like everywhere you go. You go to the to any bookstore or or a convenience store and you see you know, this kind of stuff. It's like come on, that's a little too much for anyone. Not to mention the uh, unfortunately very real underwear thieves yeah yeah literally uh, the i lived across the street from a convenience store it was a 7-eleven for two years and i went obviously so i went there for buying stuff sometimes uh, like um bento boxes and basically as soon as you get there it was it was like it was a a, a window on the uh, was left and it was chock full of these magazines with I don't know 16 year old girls half naked that was pretty miserable I do agree Japan is some of the most sexually depraved cultures out there but it's not all that different here though in many ways yeah I mean uh, nowadays it's pretty it's pretty mainstream uh, but I think there. I don't know, it looks like it has a completely different connotation because they, I don't know, the, the whole teenage girl thing, that's also one of the reasons why I don't really draw anime girls is because I don't like that idea. I have, also I have a little girl, so I, I, I don't want her to become like that because she lives in Japan. And it is important for me that that's, that's too much. Like you, you walk, you walk across the street and you see these uh, these magazines with really they they look like six year old girls. They're probably not, but they look like like the whole idea, the whole look is kind of sad for me at least. I think a lot of it is escapism, recapturing something that they think was lost to them. Yeah. Then again, at some point you have to grow up. That's gross. <sighs> 
yeah, I feel like a lot of people there are not really grown ups. Um, in the sense that, well, like just to um, refer to the thing I was saying a while ago, they are not learning because society is so repressive. They're not learning to express their emotions in a mature way. So they are, in a sense, a little more childish than other people in the West. Although they see they see expressing emotions as childish. So you can you can you're fine not telling a person you're upset and just walking away without saying anything. But it's not fine stopping what you're saying uh, and actually saying, okay, well, I, I didn't like that. Uh, can you please not do it again? Because that has seen uh, has been seen as um, childish. I've been told, hey, why are you so childish? Like, I'm just telling you I don't like that. But they, they do it. And it's, it's a deterrent for deeper relationships, obviously, in general with people. Then again, at some point you have to, yeah, I can see that. It is very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Nice through, they think we are messed up and vice versa. <laughs> yeah. It's a cultural thing. But I personally, I, I guess because I grew up in the West, but I think being able to on one hand, uh, express not, not just your feeling, to articulate how you feel. It's going to make your life a little easier in the long run and more effective. Uh, better relationships and things like that. Instead of bottling them up and then letting them explode. It still happens in our, in our society as well, obviously. That's yeah, true. It's a cultural thing. Yes, it really is. Oh, it's not going to be a problem anymore when AI takes over, right? Almost there. Almost ready to launch the T800. there let's see if I can finish the last one kind of pseudo finish I didn't joke because that will happen I have that feeling <laughs> it is just half a joke <laughs> just half a joke I know he lurks in the shadows I've been I was discussing uh, with a couple friends yesterday about AI being sentient or not <sighs> And that's a really hot topic nowadays because of that Google Lambda interview. Somebody who works at you works you work with AI. That's pretty cool. I tried myself. I was, I was too lazy to continue. Any AI company. That's gotta be pretty cool though. How do you feel about it? Like about AI becoming sentient and eventually, do you think that's possible? And I'm probably gonna leave the last one. Yeah, do it off screen. I like it though. I do contract work for Google. Wow, that's really cool. It's 
gotta be satisfying. I wanted to play around a little bit with TensorFlow and uh, machine learning. I just, back then I didn't have the machine power to do that. And then I, when I did have it, I was like, ah, oh, it's too much work. Let's get back to drawing. <laughs> kind of interesting that a part of my brain has become part of artificial intelligence. Oh, we can finish this or pseudo finish this. Let's pretend to pretend it's finished. We did most of them though. That's a success for me. Most of the sculpts. That needs adjustment, obviously. It's a lot of tweaks. You can just get rid of the back of the skull. Why, why not? But okay, um, this is gonna be the very same as the others, so I'm gonna really stop here and finish it by myself. Yeah, let's leave it here. Also, because I wanna, I wanna tweak this one. It's I'm, I'm not a hundred percent happy with it. This is how it looks so far. I think I've gone a little too blue in some areas, so I might have to pull back ever so slightly. I'm pretty happy with this area. I'm probably gonna use it as a thumbnail. And these are good too. Yeah, I think it's it's looking decent. So. Uh, We'll see, it might be just a surprise. Uh, I don't know if I'll do horses tomorrow. I'll think through it. But uh, for today, I guess that's it. Thanks, uh, thanks guys for watching. And we will see each other again. Well, you will see my client and I will not see you <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, oh wait. Yeah, I would dial uh, the blue down a bit and the skulls are melting a bit into it. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. We'll see. Thanks to you guys. All right. You have a good one. Cheers.